So today we've been talking about the fact that when the ego is not king, there is a way to reach the promised land. And the promised land is by definition, my definition is where the ego isn't king, but that caring is primary. And so I think the next question that we need to ask is why doesn't the ego want us to be happy? I think we can all recognize the fact that if we were living in an, a less egoically dominated world, we would all be so much happier. If you knew that your fundamental needs would be taken care of, what would you do? What would you be? Do you think that you would be a slug? Or do you think that you would actually start developing your divine potential to care and help and participate in a mutually supportive society? Ask yourself, which do you think you would rather do? When you have an opportunity to lie around in bed all day and eat bonbons, how long can you stomach that? It's frustrating, it's boring, and you have no self-value. Now, supposing your ego has told you that the height of accomplishment is to be able to lie in bed and eat bonbons. That means that you have finally become the queen or the little prince or whatever it is and order other people around. So your ego is telling you that that's what you really want. Or your ego may tell you that scamming the system is what really is going to make you happy. And you want to do as little as possible and get as much out of it as you can. Well, the fact of the matter is, of course, that scamming the system is a full-time job. So it's not like you're really having nothing to do. But you don't feel good. You don't want to have to scam the system. You want to feel nurtured, not by cheating, but just because you have enough value to the universe that your needs are met, that is the opposite of scamming the system. And it's the opposite of being the little prince. So no, that isn't really what we would do, is it? We would be way more productive. Well, why would we be more productive? Because we would be relaxed and we would be focusing on doing our job rather than worrying about whether we're going to lose our job or whether we're impressing somebody. We can actually focus on what we're doing. Wouldn't it be wonderful for doctors to be able to treat patients according to the needs of the patients rather than having to prove to the insurance company that they did all the right things. I mean, it's so obvious, isn't it? By nature, I'm not going to say all because I don't know every human being, but I believe that by nature, we tend to want to give. I've been talking in part one of this talk about how the ego stops us from being natural people and from giving and caring all for our survival. But supposing life were not as much of a struggle and we actually knew our needs would get met, maybe we would start doing what we were placed on the earth to do. Now, okay, you're saying, oh, yeah, I'm really worried. I mean, I trust myself, but I don't trust that guy over there. You know, they're going to, you know, they're going to poop uh, and they're going to take their poop and spread it on the wall and call it art and want me to support them. And I'm working my ass off and I'm going to support them. You know, I think that when people take poop and smear it on the wall, there's probably something wrong. 
that, that's probably a, a slightly deranged person who thinks that's art. But if that's really their art, then more power to them. I'm just saying that I think if people were supported, they would really figure out what it is that they should do. And I will bring this back to why the ego doesn't want us to be happy. But I just want to share this, that being happy means being relaxed enough so that we can challenge ourselves in the right ways. Let's take that young athlete who feels like they have to be an Olympian or they have to impress or they have to impress their mother or father or they have to impress the girlfriend or the cheerleaders or their coach or whatever it is. They are straining. They are killing themselves. Are they developing their potential or are they squandering and sometimes destroying their potential? And they're doing it for their egos because their egos tell them that this is their way to getting their needs met or to being admired. So we see young kids having concussions and pretending that they're not because they don't want to be taken off the field for their egos. Are their egos helping them to develop or are their egos destroying their potential? It's true for all of us. If you're an intellectual, let's say you're in school and you're studying like crazy, taking caffeine, taking pills to make yourself smarter or to stay awake, so you could cram, so you can get the grade, so you can get into the school, because you know you can't get into a school, you're not going to get an education if you don't do that. Your ego is driving you. Is that supporting you to fulfill your potential? Are you really learning anything? I know a lot of people who would cram before tests and forget every word as soon as the test was over. Did they learn anything? Did they develop their minds? You see, it can happen on the physical level. It can happen on the emotional level. It can happen on the spiritual level. Uh, I'm going to prove that I am the most evolved person on the planet, so I can hold my breath for 20 minutes. <laughs> like, uh, hello? Uh, of course, that's an exaggeration, but I don't know how long people can hold their breath for it, that that proves how elevated they are. Uh, is there some reason, some need for the body that it needs to be able to do that unless you're doing underwater diving without a mask? Or I can allow myself to be bombarded with negative energy and I will never be impacted. That will prove how high I am. Is that not ego, guys? And maybe you're not supposed to allow negativity to keep going on. Maybe you're supposed to challenge it. Do you think I'm joking? Do you know, you may know this, that, you know, I've read, oh my God, so-and-so was a real master because he could drink 20 vodkas and take five LSD pills and not be impacted. And I look at that and I say, that person is an idiot, not a master. Why? Because the body is supposed to feel poisoned when you do shit like that to it. That's how you know something is wrong with what you're doing. Oh, but it's proving something about you. Uh, that doesn't impress me. Now, being loving in this world, now that impresses me. Being able to overcome the damage of your probably traumatic childhood and give a darn about anybody else, that impresses me. So we're always pushing ourselves to some kind of feat that's going to prove something about us, like I finally became the president of the company. And that built my character. No, it didn't. 
that destroyed the lives of all the people we were competing with. It's like all upside down thinking. It doesn't mean that we don't have to build our character through being challenged, but let's get the right challenges for the right reason. I am challenging you. I'm challenging you to watch your ego every minute of the day. Is that easy? No. Am I challenging you to do that because there's a contest that you're going to be, at the end of this, the best ego buster in the group? There's no reward. The reward is you begin to have a little bit more command over your own ego, and that will make you happier. Wow, that is an appropriate challenge. Because if we don't do this, guys, we're going to self-destruct. But so many of the challenges that we take on are destroying us. I can drink you under the table. I can eat more than you. Can you believe that? Why would a human being want to prove that it can stuff more hot dogs into its mouth? I mean, look at it. It's pure nonsense. It's ego, but it's not just oh, uh, harmless. It's harmful. Your body has to deal with all this stuff. And that impacts your soul and your mind because we are not either spiritual or mental or physical. We are all three at the same time. I can't imagine what's happening, what the spirit of that person at the, at the food eating contest is. And so somebody will say, like they say about football, but it's really important because they're building self-esteem. You mean there's no other way to build self-esteem than to go out and have your head bashed in and to bash in someone else's. There are no challenges on the planet worth taking on, like cleaning up our rivers and our streams, like helping the infirm, like trying to find better ways to support ourselves so we don't get sick. You know, we need, of course, to find cures, but the best cure is not to get it. You know, we're discovering more and more that we're getting these bugs that, that can't be uh, healed. You know, uh, antibiotic resistant uh, germs. This is not science fiction, this is reality. We need to create a healthier environment. We don't need, uh, you know, another run of who's competing to get the cure for this disease that's going to end up being a problem anyway. We as humanity need to figure out how to co-create a healthier environment so we are much less likely to get sick. Why do we have to have dirty water? You know, why do we need a cure for cholera? So I'm not saying that we, that we don't need some medicine. What I'm saying is we need to stop making that another way of competing to find cures when we really need to co-create a healthy environment so we become more well. And we're not going to get that by winning at the hot dog eating event. Why can't we make our primary challenge co-creating a happier world? Well, does the ego want us to be happy? No. Our ego wants us to win, and it tells us that winning will make us happy. But winning does not make us happy. It never makes us happy. You know why? Okay, you've won the medal. You're standing there at the Olympics. Da, 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 I don't even remember the song. Anyway, so, oh, yeah, it's, the, it's whatever you're, and you've made, oh, my God, your entire nation is uh, adulating you. Now, of course, you damaged your leg. You ruined your hearing. But hey, you're happy because you've won. You have won. But not 
only that, the minute you win, it's like, okay, and what are you going to do next? Uh-oh, I think it's retirement time. I can't retire. I only have seven gold medals, and the, and, and the person who has the record has nine gold medals. I have to go on for 12 more years. Because the gold medal is not enough. It will never be enough. And then when you break all the records and you've had seven concussions and you're crippled with arthritis and you're sitting there looking at your gold medals, then you say, or you have no life because during all these years, you haven't developed any social skills. You have no love. You have no family. You have only focused on your right pinky because you've been in the pinky contest for 24 years. You have the strongest right pinky on the planet. But what about your hands? What about your brain? What about your soul? You know, you, you spend tw 20 hours a day working that pinky. So even if you don't get arthritis in that pinky, which you probably will, what happened to you? Where is your beingness? Look what you have to give up in order to get that medal. And then you're sitting and you know, all right, so now you've, you've broken the record of, of medals. You have it. Then somebody is going to come along and they are going to outdo you and you're too damned old to stop it. I mean, you know this is true. The minute you get to the top, you're worrying about everybody trying to drag you down because you become the next target. Being at the top is the target. Now, we have other targets in between. We have middle management, right? So we, we have to overcome them, and we have to eliminate them, and then we have to eliminate them, and then we become the king, and... Uh, what is it? Um, there's a phrase by Shakespeare about uneasy lies the head that wears the crown, right? So are you really ready to be happy? Oh, yes. You have that moment of ebullience where I'm it. I'm it. I finally did it. I won. Followed by depression, fear, anxiety uneven development, and we call this great. I mean, the Olympics, for example, is the greatest of humanity, right? Of course, there's the performance-enhancing drugs, and there's the, the person who kicked the other person and all of that. But, oh, let's say you didn't do any of that. That is the greatest achievement of humanity. No, feeding the homeless is the greatest achievement of humanity. That is the greatest achievement of the ego. And I'm not saying that I don't admire athletes. I don't admire their self-discipline. I think they're incredible. But what about if we stopped putting all that effort into making ourselves the greatest and put that effort into making us all happy and well? There is never happiness that comes from ego. The woman who gets the, the man or the other woman because of her looks is going to be neurotic her whole life looking for the next wrinkle. There is no winning really. But the ego has us thinking that it's really the greatest. Oh, I made money, more money than anybody else this year. Nobody can buy my products, but I made more money. Like you really need more millions or more billions of dollars. You don't have enough. You don't have enough. Makes you sick inside. You can't look at the face of the people you've screwed to get there. What about all these corporations who've made a ton of money with 
obviously defective products. What about all these corporations that have told us that it's fine to have lead in paint and lead in water and lead in our environment? Of course, that turned out not to be true. And Teflon and all of that. How do they feel? How do those people feel when they look at the face of the person who's been poisoned by them in their madcap race to the top? How do you feel? Because there is a human being inside every one of us, I believe, that feels something. How do you feel? I used to live in New York City and in Manhattan, some of the wealthiest neighborhoods were around the corner from the poorest. How could you ever go home on the subway, get out of the subway, walk through the slum, and then get to your penthouse over Central Park? So you had to have armed guards to make sure that nobody broke into your fortress. The ego tells us if we get these things, we will be happy. So now I'm gonna give you the answer to the question why the ego doesn't want us to be happy. Because the only things that make us happy don't come from the ego. And its entire story collapses. And it has no power over us anymore. You see, because not only does the ego tell us that our survival is based on it, it tells us our happiness is based on it. I will be happy when I've really learned how to dominate my husband. That will make me really, really happy. I'll be happy when my children sit there quietly and remember that children are meant to be seen or not heard, but not heard. Or when my children are so busy that they get medals and everything, gymnastics, soccer, chess, dance, geographies club. My God, look at my child. They are so happy. They're going morning, noon, and night. No rest, no relaxation, no chance to grow. And they're popular too, oh yes. And pretty or handsome or whatever. I mean, look at this. Our egos tell us those things are gonna make us happy. The hell with the children. And we have to convince ourselves that we're making our children happy. You say, oh yes, but my child really wants all of that. Does the child even know what it wants? I, I was talking to you in part one of this video about how pervasive the ego is. The child knows what it needs to do in order to get survival, but also to be happy is to satisfy the ego's agenda. That is what's going to make me happy. And it doesn't because I'm happier f when I'm sitting there fishing. How many people will tell you that. Oh man, it's so great to sit here and just go fishing or just sit in the park or my child's hug or my partner's embrace or the love of a friend. That, and I don't mean the love of a friend from an egoic perspective of proving how popular I am do you see how, oh, sticky this is? But to really be happy, think about you. What have been your happiest moments? For some of us, it's just being out of pain for 10 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not your ego. Your ego didn't give you that 10 minutes without pain. In fact, the ego makes us have so much pain because it drives us and it drives us and it drives us and it drives us beyond what we are physically capable of or it makes us do horrible things to our bodies or sing too much practice too much show off jump over obstacles 
in a motorcycle and smash our knees. Yeah, that's happiness, dude. No, that's addiction. That's the ego's high, but it's not happiness. If you think about something recently that has made you happy, I bet not one of us could honestly say, happy, not ego happy, right? Not puffed up, really happy. I bet not one of us has something that came from the ego. The dog followed me from one room to the other. Wow, that made me so happy. I felt loved. Why do we love dogs? Because they're giving us what we need. But the ego doesn't want us to focus on being happy. Because then we're going to overthrow it and say, Emperor, you have no clothes. Because not only is the, the, the ego king, but it is the emperor. The emperor with no clothes, it has nothing to offer us. It tells us the money is enough. It tells us the adulation is enough. But that will not compensate for a broken body, a broken heart, and a broken spirit. So, yes, the moment you get really happy, the ego is going to jump on your ass and make it look like there's something wrong. You're lazy. You've given up your goals. You something. But, guys, when you're not dominated by the ego, you will be motivated by your connection to life your desire to give and to care. You will not give up on your goals. You'll give up, give up on your ego's goals. You will find your dharma. What brings joy, love, caring, and support to everyone? Don't let the ego fool you. One of the happiest moments of my life is this. We are happy when others are happy. And I'll tell you why. First of all, we don't have to feel guilty. We haven't hurt anybody. We haven't put them down. And because we are in our right place doing the right thing that really expresses us on the deepest level, Because we feel safe in a happy world. In a happy world, nobody is going to come with a gun and shoot us. Will they? Not likely. And no, people are not happy from shooting people. They just get a sense of false power. It's ego all over again, right? And people will have happiness to share with us when we have our times of trouble. They'll bring us their happiness and their love and their joy when we are suffering and truly suffering, and I don't mean ego suffering. We have that sense of belonging that we all desperately need, that only the ego tells us we need to win, but our souls tell us we need to belong. We won't have to be afraid of our employees that they're out to get us. And we won't have to be afraid of our supervisors that they're out to screw us. Everybody's getting their needs met. What an amazing concept that is. And you know something? 
not to, just because you have a, a more responsible job doesn't mean you should get paid more. If we were all getting our needs met, we would get what we needed, not more and not less. We wouldn't have so many sweaters in the closet that we don't even know. We, we, we have to write down a list so we can remember what we own. And we don't have to fight for a crumb when other people are throwing food away. It just means that our needs are met. And we wouldn't have to prove that we needed more than the other because we're so afraid of not getting enough. So I'd like us to just, for this moment, imagine ourselves in a universe where we didn't have to worry about our needs getting met. And this has also been proven, by the way, because in countries where there's less income inequality, people are happier. The people at the top are not more upset because they don't have so much more. They're actually happier than the people at the top in a nation with exaggerated income inequality. Income inequality, guys, is simply a reflection of the ego run amok in our world. And by in, by in, I'm not saying everybody has the same. I'm saying everybody gets their need met. Just think about it. Just think about going to a potluck where they've made the kinds of foods you can eat and you can have enough. And you love yourself because you are the kind of person you want to be, not your ego. Because you don't feel so driven and frightened that you have to fight. That you can afford to care. That you don't walk down the street and see homeless, hungry people and animals every time you walk out the door. You could walk in the street and feel safe. Safe from violence and safe from guilt. And imagine yourself going to your home, no matter how modest or grand, it needs to be, needs to be. What do you really need? 4,000 feet or 400? For what you're doing in your life, Think about being in something that just fits you and having happy people greeting you when you get home. Feel it. Fight for it. Yes.